All right. Um, good morning, Council. Uh, for the record, Ahmad Khaimi with Public Works. Uh, so this morning, we would like to go over uh, Camp Bonneville and the next steps for the site. Uh, we're ready to move forward and start the master planning process. Uh, as you know, master planning is an important document that will help the Council and staff to outline improvement for the Camp Bonneville for the next 10 to 20 years. The, the master planning will take approximately one to two years to complete. And as, uh, uh, I just want to emphasize that master planning is, is not a construction document. However, it's a planning document that will help us to develop capital improvement documents, public uh, parks improvement plans, and seek any grants that are available. Uh, it's our goal to make sure the process is transparent and ensure that there's a lot of public involvement. So our first step is in the process to create a creation of two committees via, before we select a consultant to start the master plan. Uh, now our team, I have Megan Reed, uh, our Public Works Communication Manager, uh, Galena Burley, uh, Public Works Parks and Lands Manager, and Eva Henley, uh, Public Works Finance Manager, to go over the proposal and formation of that uh, committees. Uh, the presentation is short, uh, so that will allow for council to ask questions and discussions that you might have. And if you uh, have any questions, feel free to stop us during the presentation ask any question. With that, I'll turn it over to Galena and the, and the team. Uh, Galena? Thank you, Ahmad. Can you all hear me okay? All right. Uh, good day, counselors. For the record, my name is Galena Burley. I manage Clark County's Parks and Lands Program. We could go ahead and go to the next slide. <clears throat> As you know, Camp Bonneville is located in the foothills of the Cascade Mountain. It's about seven miles north of the Columbia River. It was established in 1909 as a drill field and rifle range for Vancouver Barracks. It was used primarily as a training camp for various branches of the military for about 85 years. The property is largely undeveloped and more than half of it, uh, six square miles is forested. As you might recall from our presentation in October, the Army's approved cleanup of the site was completed last year. This year, we put forth an RFP with the college's guidance to finalize the draft a remedial investigation and feasibility study and to develop a long-term maintenance and operations plan for groundwater monitoring. Currently, the groundwater is monitored under a contract with PBS Engineering. We are also completing our grant requirements and logistics with the Army. One of the programs we are developing with guidance from both the Army and Ecology is a long-term operations and maintenance program for the whole site. And as you already know, the site remains close to the public and the staff with Parks and Lands employees. In addition, at Council's guidance, we are preparing a public enrollment plan for an upcoming master plan of the regional park element. Before any park development can occur, the county will engage in a master planning process. This is consistent with other parks development efforts and can include multiple phases. At this time, I'm going to turn this presentation over to Megan Reed, our communications manager to discuss public outreach logistics. Thank you so much, Galena, and good morning, Council. Again, for the record, my name is Megan Reed, and I'm the communications manager for Clark County Public Works. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? Thank you. As you all know, plans for Camp Bonneville have long held the interest of our community here in Clark County. From the nearby residents who want to ensure that natural areas are maintained in perpetuity, to local clubs and associations who see an opportunity to, to add more recreation space, and to all of the interested parties who want to ensure a safe, accessible space for future generations of Clark County residents, we in Public Works have received many inquiries over the years on when the master planning process for this property will start. Public involvement for this project is our top priority. And in order to garner community involvement at the beginning of the master planning process, we are recommending the establishment of two advisory committees. The technical advisory committee would consist of 8 to 12 members that have technical expertise in their fields. We would solicit applications from members of the park community or landscape design um, and development community, as well as architects and conservation planners. 
The policy advisory committee would also consist of 8 to 12 members, but this committee would be comprised of those with demonstrably vested interests in open space and recreation in Clark County and specifically near the Camp Bonneville site. Uh, we would solicit applications and make recommendations on appointments with uh, one planning commission member, two parks advisory board members, two neighborhood uh, representatives, so people who live close to the Camp Bonneville property, uh, six community representatives, that would be residents of Clark County, one Clark County Council member, and two public works staff members. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, as I stated earlier, we recommend an application process to form the appointments to these committees. The application process would include uh, providing a resume and answering preformed questions about their general knowledge and interest in the project. Accurately capturing the need and interest of our entire community is extremely important to us. So all of these applications would be solicited and reviewed with a diversity, equity, and inclusion framework. Uh, applications would be reviewed by Public Works Senior Management, and a recommendation would be made based on the applications that we receive. Uh, based on guidance that we receive from you at this meeting, uh, we would then submit those recommendations to either the county manager or to the council for final approval and appointment to those committees. Next slide, please. We envision a process that allows the committees to engage in a minimum of 10 meetings throughout the master planning process, and those committees would help to select a consultant for the upcoming master plan RFP, and their charge would be to provide recommendations on park elements, park design, uh, our public outreach process, and much more. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Galena. Thank you, Megan. Can we go to the next slide, please? Councilors, on this map, you will see a very high level summary of land that could be developed as a regional park, including trails and natural areas. Green Central Valley floor, the area in the kind of lime green um, is the area uh, about 450 acres. It was clear to 14 inches. However, there are approximately 150 acres of that land that are wetlands or protected areas. Usable acreage in that area for park is about 300 acres. All of the 10 areas that you see in, at the site um, are wildlife areas. They include trails intended to be natural areas uh, for timber management purposes, wildlife management, etc. So in the master planning RFP, we're putting uh, about 800 acres total, including trails and uh, natural areas for the master planning effort. Um, and as that process unfolds, the county will solicit qualified firms to develop that plan. Uh, next page, please. Um, the master plan for the site will be done in two phases. Phase one will focus on public outreach, concept level planning proposals to support the master plan, and a business plan for operating the preferred alternative in a revenue neutral manner. Consultants will be required to review existing data and previous reports to ensure that concept level planning proposals are consistent with the Camp Bonneville reuse plan, early transfer agreement, and other restrictions and requirements. Phase two will focus on the design and permitting of the concepts developed in phase one. At this time, staff are completing an RFP, which will go out with guidance from the advisory committees, as you heard from Megan, uh, to solicit consultant firms for phase one of the master planning effort only. And with your guidance today on public process logistics presented by Megan, and any points you would like to add to the master planning uh, discussion, staff are prepared to issue this RFP as soon as this spring or early summer. I don't believe we have another slide, uh, so I'm going to turn things over to Ahmad for Q&A and discussion. 
Thank you, team. So, Council, we'd like to open uh, um, for your discussion, questions you might have our, about our proposal and the committee selections, and uh, if you agree with them or like to make any modifications or any further clarification about them, the team is here and we're happy to answer them. Uh, who would like to ask the first question? I would like to. Please. I, um, before turning attention to the committees themselves, one of the things that you mentioned is that both Army and ecology work continues on the land. I wondered um, specifically, what are they doing now? And especially relative to safety of the lands consistent with the feedback that we have gotten from people in the area that are concerned about um, about the safety for uh, staff, people from the public walking on the land and not knowing whether there may even be unexploded um, devices present. So, uh, um, Galena, I'll, I'll have you uh, respond to that question and I can follow up. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Very good question. Um, we continue to work with the Army and Ecology largely in a consulting capacity. Um, as um, I mentioned um, in one of the earlier slides, we're completing, uh, finalizing our grant uh, closure documents with the Army. Um, they're still available to us for inquiries, questions. We meet with them and staff, um, some follow-up items that we need to submit, uh, including the long-term operations and maintenance plan. Uh, we have a very similar partnership with Ecology and work with them on the groundwater monitoring process, including a separate RFP um, I mentioned earlier for long-term plans um, to monitor groundwater. Um, there will be additional work with Ecology and some outreach and public process. Uh, once we have consultant uh, work uh, uh, developed and in place, um, so that work continues. It's largely in consultant. Uh, type of a uh, uh, setting um, and guidance. How about relative to safety, which probably would be more uh, boots on the ground, so to speak, rather than consultation? So we and are, and I'm speaking of Army and, and uh, uh, ecology still. Thank you. We're required to submit an operations and maintenance plan to both of those entities, and that's what we're developing right now. No boots on the ground to check for safety. Uh, we don't have an appointment scheduled with a college or army at this time. Mm -hmm. no, I, just to add to that, uh, uh, Rebecca, can we go back to slide number six? Yes. Um, so, Council, I think uh, you're familiar with this map. As uh, mm -hmm. Galena mentioned, so the area that we're going to be utilizing for park is with that lime green area. And the red area, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Galena, this is the uh, the area where we're going to be uh, fenced and it's no, not going to be accessible to public. Uh, that's called central impact area and so that the, no access will be allowed in that area. Outside of areas that has been cleaned up uh, with the contractor uh, through Army, uh, and that's going to be utilized for uh, public access of, through trails and things like that. So. Uh, that process has been completed, as my understanding is, and so that's why we are ready to start the, you know, the 800 acre that's going to be used for parks, and then the rest of them as an uh, open nature area that allows some kind of trail access and things like that. That is correct, Ahmad. The pink area is referred to as the central impact area, that's 500 acres, and then the red zone around it is 100 feet from that area, uh, not usable or open to the public. Uh, further questions by council? Uh, Councilor Medici? Please. Um, yeah, I'd like to follow up on uh, Councilor Bowerman's question. Um, I have some, I think, similar concerns. She and I haven't talked about it, but uh, um, actually, I, have, I have a number of questions and some of them are about the presentation and some are larger. Uh, we did just receive a, uh, an ex a lengthy and detailed email from a constituent, um, and I know you all were copied on it as well, with a lot of questions, uh, both about uh, unexploded ordinance and safety and uh, uh, water quality, uh, contamination, that sort of thing. Um, I think that a number of the questions that were raised are very good questions. 
And uh, I have not had in past work sessions and conversations around Camp Bonneville, I haven't really felt that we, we've gotten satisfactory responses to questions about the general safety and the work that's being done there and plans for how to keep the public safe uh, when they are there. Um, I would very much like to see a written set of responses to the very specific points that were raised in that email, uh, both for my own knowledge and information and also to help uh, those in the community who have these questions uh, know the answers. Uh, I am willing to bet that a number of the questions are very easy to answer and it's simply information that we just don't have at our fingertips. And there are other questions that may be a little uh, stickier that need to be dealt with. And I'd really like any committees uh, working on an, RF, uh, an RFP or on a master plan and making recommendations to have the answers to those questions um, as they talk about what we'd like the site to become. So I'm making that request if, um, I understand I'm only one counselor, so we would need to have uh, more agreement that that would be something we'd like. Um, so I will open that up for question in a second, but uh, I have a specific question with the map that's up now. So what is the size of the entire outlined area on this map? It's I, close. I, I think the area is uh, under 4,000 acres. Is that? Okay. That is I just, we've, we've had a lot of different numbers. And so I'm just trying to, to make sure that I understand what we're talking about. So when you reference the usable park related 300 to 450, if we count the wetlands area, is that solely within the green? It is within that, the green lime green area and the trails that are also in green. Okay. And so the trails that go into the tan area, to what degree has the tan area been cleared? Uh, go ahead, Galena. Um, that area, I'd have to uh, take a look at our numbers and get back to you, Counselor. Okay, but not to the same level, not to the 14 inches within the lime green area. I will, I will double check and get back to you. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so to go back to my earlier question, um, I, I would very much like uh, the council to discuss the possibility of getting some written answers to uh, some of the questions that were raised uh, in this um, letter that we received from a constituent. Vice Chair Medvedji. Please. I am uh, with you on that, Councillor Lance, and uh, I guess you could surmise that from my earlier uh, comments um, in terms of getting something written. And I would simply add, I'd like to see that happen before the decision is made on who will be on the committees. Because, for example, right now, the technical advisory committee is more landscaping oriented than it is safety oriented. And for technical advisory, that might need to be changed. And the uh, policy committee is less geared to neighborhood participation than some, including myself, might wish it to be. Although there is some neighborhood representation there, I'd like to see that uh, be strong because the neighborhoods are, I think, very well informed in many cases on what is present on that land and uh, obviously have concerns about the potential for um, fire and there being a uh, clearing where there are trails. So I'm, I am uh, a second vote for having that, uh, that done. And I, I don't see her readily on my screen. I, I understand that uh, the chair is still not Present is Julie Olson present. Do, do you yes. wish to? Ask? Yes, please. I'm, I'm sorry, I missed the question. No. <laughs> well, let, let me go ahead and then comment. Um, I so I have been advocating for over a year uh, that we should have a regional 
citizen stakeholder group. I appreciate that um, uh, it's been somewhat fine tuned to have two different committees uh, set up and I'm, I, I'm all in favor of that. And I do have uh, some additional comments uh, a little bit later about that. But I, I am not in favor of delaying any further having these committees put together because they're they're going to take some time and it's going to involve a lot of public engagement and we're going to get a lot of great ideas in advance of actually putting uh, a completed plan uh, together and i think the longer we delay um, it just adds to the bureaucratic processes uh, that'll really slow down good uses of camp bonneville now having said that um Obviously, two of the counselors and and a lot in the public are very concerned about the safety, and we should be, and uh, the answers should be uh, provided um, with that lengthy uh, email uh, that we all received. But I, I don't want to hold up uh, our committees because some of those uh, questions are, as Councilor Lenz indicated, very easily answered. Some of it's just an absence of information that's been made public or made public enough. You know, a lot of the scattered munitions that were found outside the central impact area were nearly uh, exclusively inert or what we call dummy rounds. They pose no danger whatsoever. Uh, however, uh, certainly it is a concern. Uh, the fencing that we'll need to do of that 500 acres uh, will need to be maybe perhaps a little bit more robust than the few strands of bob wire that uh, has been suggested so far but the public needs to be uh, assured that this is going to be a safe place not just in the green area but on the trails i i, I really want to bring the equestrian community to this to this four thousand acres minus the 500 uh, on trails and obviously horses <laughs> You know, if, if somebody's going to find munition, it's going to be a horse because um, they they really pound the earth and pound the trails. So safety is a paramount uh, issue. And, and I'm pretty familiar with the watershed issues there and the testing that's been ongoing. And I've been very satisfied that the uh, testing sites are in the right locations and that there has been no migration of any of the pollution uh, that was resident from the dump site that's been uh, cleared. So there's a lot of questions of safety and communication we need to do. Obviously, wildfire is an ongoing one. Um, you know, we have veteran groups interested. We have the equestrian groups interested. We have campers interested, hikers interested. We need to keep this process moving forward. So I, I really advocate that we do answer the questions posts in uh, the detailed emails that we've received from another resources but i'd really like the committees to be formed and start and that will assist in getting this information out to a wider uh, uh, audience and it also will incorporate additional questions i no doubt from both your your technical committees as well as uh, the other park related committee on uses so uh, I really, I don't want to slow the committees up. I don't think it should be a one, uh, a consecutive process. I, I really advocate to get these committees put together. Julie, did you wish to uh, comment? Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Councilor Majeek. No, I think I, I agree with you. I think we need to just continue to push forward here, try to answer the questions as best as possible to get concerns addressed. Um, but we've done a lot of work over the years, and and uh, I trust what we're doing. So. The broader the group and the the idea is just to continue to move forward. So, um, yeah. So, uh, Councilor Medvedji, um, with with that in mind, we are at a sort of a combination agreement and uh, stalemate. Um, <laughs> it sounds like that there is agreement that we do need to get the uh, answers to these questions and. Uh, I know that it is not necessarily typical that we would say, here's this letter from a constituent, please answer all of these questions. But I think that they were very well laid out questions. 
and would serve as a good model for um, just getting getting some of the information that is needed to make good decisions about this property. So I'm glad that we appear to be in unanimous agreement about that. Um, I agree with Councillor Bowerman that I'd like to see those written answers completed before the committees move forward. Uh, that doesn't necessarily preclude starting the work on recruiting the committees. I would just like the committees to have this information before they begin working. I don't think that hoping it will come in at some time during the course of their work is productive. So my request, uh, and I understand that we're right now in a two wait, two don't wait. So I, I'm kind of trying to, to narrow and tailor um, my request for the waiting of let's go ahead and have the conversation that the, for the purpose of this work session of what these committees will do and who should be on them, or at least what the composition should be so that that work of recruiting can begin. But my request would be that the work on answering those questions begins immediately and that we are provided the, the answers before those committees meet. I mean, we have to go through a process of recruitment, application, review, appointment. I would hope that, especially if a lot of these questions are easy to answer, that we could get those answers by the time we have appointed members to these committees. So it doesn't necessarily slow things down. I'm, I guess, advocating for that work to be done by the time committees are meeting. And I wonder if, if that clarification um, helps us get to closer agreement on this. Yeah, so if I could maybe restate that, but ask, uh, point the question towards Galena and Ahmad. I don't know if you've seen uh, that most recent email. I mean, it consolidates a lot of questions that have been asked before. Um, I mean, will it interfere or will it be so protracted that we can't proceed with the recruitment process for our, our two committees? If we agree on the two committees, I'm, I am supportive of the two committee approach. Uh, I mean, do you see any impediment in the timing to both uh, begin the process of recruiting and have those questions answered before we're ready to approve uh, the membership? Uh, thank you, Councillor, for the question. So I, one thing I want to emphasize that for the public and also councillors that in public works, we live and breathe safety so that everything we do has is related to safety and making sure that our public is safe so that we are looking that's all primary focus on anything that we do so it will be a focus for us in Camp Bonneville so I think yeah if we can do a parallel process and we're more happy to respond to those questions we received the email yesterday so we'll probably take us a little bit of time to prepare the responses and we're more than happy to do that and we can bring it back to another council uh, session time and go over those questions and then if, if there's any points of clarification that needs to be made so we're more than happy to do that um, as uh, Councillor Menvigi mentioned that, yes, the process of selecting and this committee members, it might take two to three months until we do the solicitations, get the application, review them, and then bring that to uh, county managers' uh, attention or council's attention to appoint them. So it'll take some time to uh, do that. So I, if we can do the parallel process, uh, I think we can accomplish both of your goals. Councillor Menvigi. Yeah, I, yeah, thanks. Sorry. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think I think we can do a parallel process. I think we can start to answer these questions at the same time as we're recruiting these committees and then maybe at the time we've gotten them both. Um, I would think we'd be able to get these questions answered in the time it would take to get these committees formed. And so then we can revisit the answers to the questions um, after these committees are formed and then uh, generate a path forward from there. So I see Councillor Lentz nodding yes. How about Councillor uh, Bowerman? Obviously, if if something comes up and we're not satisfied with the answers still, uh, once they come back, we can say, hey, we're not going to approve these committees yet until we get these, these questions solidified. Uh, does that satisfy the other councillors? Um, I support the idea of a parallel process, assuming that we move along today with what the makeup of the committees would be and uh, specify that, not obviously by the name of the person, but by uh, their background and qualifications that would be sought. So 
if we could then, let, why don't we focus on that? And what are the comments and questions about uh, the committee membership and, and backgrounds? I, I see Councillor Bowerman, so I, I'm sorry, I, I jumped you on this one, but um, I, uh, first, I also want to uh, thank the Council for the conversation on this. I appreciate that we were able to talk about it and get to a place where we're all uh, in consensus on, on path forward. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, uh, a question, I have a question about what you see as the different specific roles for each of the committees, the technical committee and the policy committee. I think I appreciate the idea of two separate committees, but I'd like to hear more about the kind specific of the specific kinds of work you're looking at each of them doing and um, also how they will interact. Will they meet together? Will they will their work influence the other? Just if we have two committees operating at the same time, how will that work? That's a good question. So, um, the, the work that the advisory committees would be doing would be very similar to each other. So informing us on the, the master planning process, public outreach, um, all the things that we mentioned during the presentation and. Each group would obviously have their own kind of viewpoints. Um, I think part of the reason for separate committees is that uh, from experience, when you get technical experts with their kind of singular view on things um, in together with people who don't have that expertise, the, the conversations kind of become circular and don't really make a lot of progress. And so um, kind of establishing those two committees is our way of ensuring that conversations move forward. Um, the information would be shared by public works staff um, to say, you know, here's what this committee decided on this portion, or here's what this committee thinks about this. Um, but we don't really foresee much interaction, if at all, between the two committees. Um, I think that. What's your question? Is there another part that I missed, Councillor Lentz? Uh, no, you definitely answered the question about um, uh, how they would or wouldn't interact. Uh, and I think I generally understand the differences between the two committees. Um, I guess a question that that leads me to then is if this is about the master planning process, uh, if you have a professional type committee that ends up going in, say, direction A, and you have a more community based committee that ends up going in direction B, uh, how would you reconcile those differences? Another really good question. So there won't be any more weight given to one committee over the other. Um, part of gathering that kind of information helps us inform our process as well. So we would have to take those things into account. And that's part of the work that our public works staff does every day is considering all opinions and um, you know situations that could come up and using that information to determine the best way forward. So with these committees, we're really looking for people who uh, have the expertise that we don't have here in public works, people who um, live near the property and know things about the property that we may not know, or people who, um, you know, I, I really liked uh, Councillor Bowerman's idea about adding a safety technical expert uh, as one of the people on the technical advisory committee, um, people who would bring those things forward to us that we wouldn't have necessarily thought of ourselves. So we would take all of that information into consideration and not give weight over with one group over the other. Um, Councilor, just to add what Megan said, one of the other reasons behind the two committees are uh, from per council's direction that we want to make sure that the park and the activities that happen that are self-sustaining. So one of the things that, you know, that may potentially bring revenues and for maintenance and things like that. So whatever is uh, recommended 
uh, by a consultant and it's reviewed by a technical committee, make sure that's real. And it's a real application that's and it's uh, vetted through so that, because you can put a lot of stuff in the master plan, but is it doable? Is it something that should be applied in this area? Is it it's gonna bring some revenue and the things that uh, neighborhood and the region wide uh, neighborhood wants them? So I think that's why the important technical advisory group that's going to provide and vet through that, and then we can take a lot of information back to the advice, uh, the policy committee, and I said, okay, what kind of policies and things like that we need to develop for council consideration for these type of activities and the things that's going to happen in the area. So that was the reason that we wanted to have the two committees so that get through some kind of vetting process before we come before council for recommendation. Uh, further questions? Um, I would like to uh, give a comment on, and thank you, Megan, for thinking that the addition of a safety person on the technical advisory committee uh, would be a good idea. I'd like to propose maybe some additional backgrounds for that technical advisory committee so that they can, uh, as a group, live up to what I understand their, um, their purpose to be. Um, and that would be, uh, in addition to uh, a safety person, uh, someone with background in watershed, um, someone with background in fire, someone with background in ordinance uh, and ordinance control, um, unexploded, exploded, so that they know what they're doing in, in regard to that. They, and that could come from so many areas. It might even be someone in the army who's used, I don't know the language, one of those machines to uh, go underground and unearth some of those ordinances and see what, um, what is there. And then um, general contamination. And then lastly, one, maybe two people with the background that was mentioned originally of uh, landscape design and architecture. So that those are my thoughts for a technical committee. And then when the time is right, I have a thought on the, um, uh, the, the second committee as well, as far as their membership, um, unless someone else has comments on the technical advisory, I'll hold that other, the second one. Well, so my question is kind of, or comment is kind of a hybrid one. And so I, I think it's important to have someone that has some uh, safety background and is familiar with uh, formerly mined or uh, impact areas. Uh, I think that would be handy, but I don't want to focus on that because we've had a couple of years of experts doing uh, exactly, uh, Karen, what you just described as far as flailing and uh, getting down to a certain depth to clear. Uh, but we, you know, certainly someone with some background to keep an eye on that in the future for planning would be important. My question would go to, you know, I, I would love to envision an equestrian center here uh, and horse trails. And I've been in regional parks where runners, hikers and bicycles and horses kind of uh, habitate the same trails, although, uh, if etiquette isn't followed, especially with bicyclists, um, you can have some bad encounters, especially with horses. I would, you know, there's a lot of expertise in our community, a lot of volunteerism in our community for building hiking trails, for maintaining hiking trails. And the same goes for the equestrian community. They have people that are trailblazers. Uh, they have expertise in mapping these out and constructing them and then uh, there are key communicators in the community to bring volunteer efforts to not only build, um, but to maintain. So I want to keep an eye on that because I'd like to really minimize uh, the costs we pay for consultants and the, and the costs we incur in public works and parks to maintain. I want to rely on as much volunteerism as possible out in the community to make this work. So I would Hopefully, we, we would see some of that represented uh, in this technical community, the ability to design and build uh, trails of wherever it comes from, whether it's from the hiking trail, you know, the Washington Trail Association is a great organization, but the equestrian community also has trail builders as well. 
So uh, do you envision that in a technical committee or do you envision that in the uh, other committee that would look more towards general uses? Uh, I, I personally would envision that more in the policy advisory committee uh, as being one of the six community representatives uh, for Clark County. And I agree with you, Councillor Medvedji. I've, I've worked with the equestrian community out with our lower daybreak park trail construction, and uh, they are very, very good advocates for their community and what they need. And I, I think that that's a great idea. Um, I, I do want to just state that these are the types of backgrounds and these are the types of interests that we are looking to recruit. Since it is a volunteer advisory committee, there's no guarantee that we will get all of these, but it's really helpful to hear your thoughts on um, the type of backgrounds and the type of interest that you would want on these committees because it will help me uh, kind of define the outreach and recruitment procedure. So I, I really do appreciate all your thoughts on this. Yeah, super. And Karen, I, you know, we're going to run out of time soon. So if you have any comments on the other committee or in general, any of the other counselors, let's go ahead and generate those questions and a discussion. I'll, I'll give my my second point, but let me let me just say that if the work has already been done, as I think you were um, indicating there on the safety of the of the project, then I would be surprised that we don't know at this point the safety of the trails, which um, clearly would be a very important aspect. And, and like you said, very important to the equestrian group. And that's why for the technical advisory committee, I would really like to see some technical expertise there. And if that is replicated on the policy advisory committee, so much the better, because the more we have of that input, I think the better it would be. But my suggestion for the policy advisory committee is that whereas the balance now is two from the neighborhood and six from the community in general, I would like us to take those eight positions and have at least four from the neighborhood. Um, because of their concern for how that area is developed and their knowledge of it already. Uh, Councilor Medvedji. <clears throat> uh, yes, Councilor Lynch. And Councilor Bowerman, I took I took your long pause as a, a complete statement. So if I jumped in too early, please That's say right. it right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, to, to work backwards, I uh, appreciate that recommendation for the community and neighborhood representatives and would be a second to that. I think it's important that we do hear from uh, the nearby residents uh, who will be most impacted uh, by the uses of the area while balancing that with the fact that this, this will be a, uh, you know, owned by all of us in Clark County. And so I think that um, splitting that half and half is fair. Um, uh, a question about the policy advisory committee um, with your list here. Are you indicating that the 2 public works staff members will be members of the committee? I think yes. there will be more of the support and, and also the members. Yes. Okay. so. Technically, part of the committee in, in supporting the committee and being available to answer questions and having the public works kind of expertise and knowledge of public works practices and budget and what we kind of can and can't do with our resources. Okay, I am. Um, I think it is good to have public works staff the committee. Um, I would say that I hope that um, for a community based committee that the to the extent that they vote that the voting membership is community members not Clark County staff members would be my preference um, and since you'd said that it would be eight to twelve members and there are 14 right. individuals on that list I I sort of presume that maybe they were staffing but I just wanted to make that clarification and point um, on the technical advisory committee, I also support um, adding qualifications for uh, for somebody with safety and risk uh, as their mindset, as well as 
someone with direct experience in uh, in unexploded ordnance or munitions. I think that's very important, uh, given the large area that we have. Um, and uh, they may also be able to comment on the interaction of whatever is being done uh, with the pre-existing firing ranges that are currently at the site and that I don't believe are being planned to move. So somebody who can help speak to how we balance that. Um, and then uh, specifically wildfire management as well. Um, and I know you'd said that this is volunteer and we can't necessarily guarantee who's, who applies, but I'd like to see intentional recruitment for those positions. Um, we have a lot of great architects, landscapers, parks consultants around who can really help us with creating a beautiful place that people want to go. I want to make sure that these other more technical, harder to find positions are um, actively sought. Councilor, um, I think. Uh, oh, go uh, ahead. I'm on. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Megan is amazing about recruitment and uh, putting out uh, information about different venues we have on communications to uh, reach out to all of our community members around the Clark County. So I think we're going to use that all the avenues of, uh, possible for us to make sure we do a great job of recruitment. And Councilor Olson, did you want to weigh in? Perhaps lost her. Uh, so I, I don't, we had gone from almost a strictly um, neighborhood uh, me, a membership originally, and, and then that was tabled for uh, some reasons, some unknown reasons, but, uh, I, and then we had all along discussed regional membership, uh, community representation because of the size of this uh, park and its potential, some just shy of 4,000 acres or shy of 3,500 acres, if you exclude the 500 we'll never be able to use. I, you know, I, I would support adding another neighborhood representative, but I think we should keep the balance to the region. Um, I mean, there's both pluses and minuses to just having the neighborhood strongly represented. Obviously, they, they know the area best. They know the challenges with the road system is that it exists now that will only get worse if we don't have concurrency and in improving intersections and roads in and out of the park. Uh, so I, you know, I would advocate, we don't want to make the committee overly large either. So it becomes too cumbersome. So I'm okay with the number uh, that's been stated as a total, I would maybe plus up the neighborhood represent representation by maybe one, but not the overall uh, size of the committee. Um, I, you know, there's, there's no black or white here. It's just a balance between regional um, interests versus the neighborhood interests. I mean, there's a strong, and we've already sensed it, a strong neighborhood uh, bent towards just doing nothing uh, and having a wildlife preserve and uh, no activity there whatsoever. Um, but that may not be the interest of the entire county uh, or the community. Uh, so anyway, I, I would vote maybe to plus up uh, the neighborhood representation from two to three. That's just my thoughts. Uh, did we lose Julie? Is she not signed on anymore? She should be on now. Does that make sense? So if you scroll down, the first two pages are where we fill all the information in. Okay, yeah, definitely we alter that, that we do. So that was fine, except that when we changed the terms where there's a cross out there, they didn't like that. Sounds like she's unavailable right now. So, um, Councillor Mevaji. Councillor Mevaji, I think you're muted now. Are you there? <laughs> yes, we can hear you now, Councillor Mevaji. Thank you. 
So, Councillor Olson, we were uh, specifically, I think it's been proposed to uh, alter the, the composition of the membership. What, what are your thoughts? It looks like she might be unavailable at the moment, Councillor Mevaji. Speak for her, but Councillor Mevaji, uh, I'm sorry, I'm like trying to multitask. I apologize. I am listening and I am involved. I'm, just, I'm trying to do a couple things at once here, so I apologize. And then I was muted. So, uh, I, did you have thoughts on uh, the balance between the local? neighborhood versus uh, regional participation by the community? Well, I think that, you know, I think a balance there is appropriate. I think uh, you mentioned a couple other neighborhood folks. Certainly those people that live around the park or around the facility are going to be most impacted, but it is going to be a regional facility. So, um, so I don't know that I've got any additional input other than um, making sure there's a good balance there. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. I would say my argument for the balance to sort of defend the increasing neighborhood representatives by two would be that uh, this committee would also theoretically, according to the lift list, have a planning commission member, two parks advisory board members, and a county council member, in addition to the neighborhood, uh, the, the community representatives, regardless of what number that is. All of those people are also community members. In addition, you know, as county councilors, we're also all residents of Clark County uh, Planning Commission and Parks Advisory members. So I think we have strong representation for the entire region, and we would do well to um, amplify uh, more voices from uh, from the neighborhood. Would be an argument for uh, supporting Councilor Bowerman's recommendation to. Uh, take those eight positions and split them in half for a neighborhood and for a larger Clark County. Okay, so so I don't support that um, and I'm not sure how to proceed and we can take a vote. I mean, we're already missing the chair uh, and I can't we speak wanna, for- Councilor Mibiji, Sorry to interrupt. Do we wanna wait for the chair and maybe just table this particular um, question until we have everyone available? Yeah, yeah, I, I was going to come to that. I was going to suggest that, but, you know, let's, because we don't have to answer this question today uh, before we begin the recruitment process. I mean, we've already expressed each of us uh, what we thought were important for um, membership criteria. So I, I would agree with that. And I think that would be the better course to, to finalize the balance in the numbers. Any disagreement with that? Are you suggesting that maybe we could solidify the technical advisory committee so that the recruitment could begin with that group? No, I'm suggesting we begin the recruitment for both. And then we can, in our next meeting, when we address this, we can set the numbers. I mean, if you hopefully we'll get more applications than there are positions. Um, so if you're only gonna have two or three neighborhood representatives, that would be the number selected from hopefully a greater number of applicants. Uh, but I, I would say we'd move forward on both committees with the input that we've given uh, to, to parks and public works. Hmm. I, I, would, I would agree with that. I think we can answer the, the, the balance question that still continue the recruitment on both committees. It's going to take a while anyway to, to start this process. So. Okay, well, so uh, Ahmad, Alina, do, do you think you have uh, enough input from us at, for this? Um, no, thank you, Council. No, appreciate your uh, advice and recommendations. So we'll follow through that and I think we, um, I just want to confirm that you're okay for us to move parallel, uh, responding to the questions that uh, were sent from our resident. 
We'll work on that and provide a response and come to one of the council uh, time and uh, present that to you. At the same time, uh, move forward and trying to put the committees together and start the solicitations for that. So uh, if uh, that's the consensus, then we'll, we'll move forward. I think you've captured that. Uh, any um, further input by any counselor? I think that's on target, Ahmad. Thank you. Councilors, if you don't mind, I just want to make sure that I have captured all of your uh, thoughts correctly here. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll answer the questions in the email and those need to be answered before the committees begin work, but we can move forward with the recruitment for the advisory committees. Uh, to the technical advisory committee, we want to expand backgrounds to add safety and risk, risk expert. Uh, watershed management, fire management, um, ordinance control, general contamination, and really intentional outreach to people with those backgrounds to uh, try to get people on those committees. And then for the um, neighborhood, oh yes, please go ahead. And including your uh, landscape design and architecture person or two as well. Yes. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Thank you. Uh, and then for the uh, policy advisory committee, we'll come back to you and make a determination about the balance between neighborhood and general uh, county representation. But in terms of interests and backgrounds, uh, we'll make sure that we specifically do outreach to the equestrian community and then we confirmed that the public works staff members would not be voting members of, of that committee um, rather just available for support and one final thing that i wanted to clarify with you council is it sounds to me like final approval and appointment of these committees would come before the council and um, not necessarily the county manager. So I just wanted to hear your thoughts on that process. Uh, so, so that we hadn't discussed, but I wanna, I, I may have misheard you, but I, what I heard was answering all the questions that were outlined in, and I think it was Mr. Shaw's uh, email in parallel, I, I mean, I don't want to hold up and I don't, I think we've heard that everyone's okay with moving forward. Okay, I, I may have misheard you. So yeah. what, what are the thoughts on, um, I mean, is this, typically we have approved um, this kind of committee membership. Uh, what, what are the thoughts of council as, as to just giving it to the manager to approve instead? I guess my first question is about um, just the statutory authority of is this a is this a council decision or a county manager decision? Well, I, as far as charter, I don't know that the charter would even answer that. Um, but is Taylor or some? Do we have? I thought we had a lawyer on board. Do we have a, an answer for that? Yes, we do. Can I get the question again, please? For appointing members uh, to these advisory committees, is that like the, the actual specific people? Is that um, final appointment uh, the province of the county council or the county manager or public works? Um, Councillor, I'm going to need to look at that question. I'm sorry that I, but I, I don't want to shoot from the hip on that, and Fair. I, uh, I can get to that by next week. I think that's a perfect answer. Thank you, Taylor. <laughs> so, Ma Megan, you'll have to wait on that one as well. <clears throat> I, I, I also <clears throat> wanted to add one more thing for council's attention. I uh, uh, just want to make sure you're okay for us to issue the uh, request for proposals uh, because that's also is going to take several months and then the selection would be after we put the committee together so that they would like to consult them because when it, it takes a little, a little bit of time for us to advertise for requests for proposals and then informing the consultants who are interested about the project and then until they submit and chance for us to review and then 
by that time we should have our committees on board so they can make the final selection for the consultant. So I just want to uh, make sure that council is okay for us to issue that request for proposal too. Question? Please, go ahead, Karen. Ahmad, is this uh, $400,000 uh, quotation that you gave on the cost of, of this project overall, is that the consultant or what is contained in that $400,000 estimate? So that would be the uh, cost of private co for a consultant to do the work. This is, does not account for the uh, staff time at this point. So staff time is extra. That's part of the duties that we have already that we're working uh, as part of our current budget that's uh, to run the projects and processes. Could you maybe explain $400,000 of work that goes beyond what staff would be able to do with its own competencies? So uh, typically, we you know we hire consultants because we don't have the in-house expertise or the capacity to perform them. This being such a unique project that uh, one thing we want to make sure that we bring expertise from outside for our consultants who have done similar type of work projects. That because one thing that council direction is make sure that activities are suggested or reviewed, or that brings some revenue to make sure that area is self-sustaining. Uh, so that those are the things that we don't have in-house expertise. And just like typical other projects or master plan we do for other divisions of public works, so if we don't have the expertise in the house, we go and solicit information for a consultant to help us out. And then with their combination, their expertise and the information we have, then we put the master plan together for council consideration so that it gets adopted and it's more of a vetted technical plan for us to move forward. I'm, I'm sorry, Ahmad, I missed. What expertise specifically is it that you're looking for in the consultant that we don't have with our own expertise in parks? So one of them would be the, it's looking at some economic analysis for this area, is that what, whatever is proposed, is that feasible? Uh, the design of the, the things that has been done, other areas that could be implemented in the area. Uh, the type of topography that we have in, uh, in the parks that, I mean, within the area that uh, they'll help to implement some of those ideas that uh, we might not have that and a lot of design details or expertise in house that the consultant will help us is because one of the things that master plan will help us, we, we can put this kind of activity on the area. Is that really kind of work? Can we build it? Is it feasible? Uh, that will be part of the discussion. And especially we mentioned that the area is going to be uh, built in phases. So recommendation which phase should be going first is that, and in terms of cost estimates and uh, also the uh, other activities that we need to prioritize uh, what could happen in the area. And, and the other thing is we have some of the other uh, expertise that consulting bring that we don't have in the house like a landscaping architect, uh, other environmental um, consideration for the area uh, that we need uh, to get the consultant help with that. And typically on these projects, we look at what we have in-house expertise, just like our design group. Uh, if we can design some of the projects in-house, we do it. And if it's uh, outside our capacity or and if we have a deadline for grants that we need to get a project done, then we outsource it. But typically we look at whatever we have in-house before we outs outsource any of the, these kind of projects. Other questions uh, on that? Yeah. With, with I, I, so I will just share. I'm, so I'm concerned about the cost of the consultant as well, whether it's within public works budget uh, capacity already uh, at this nascent stage and um, looking at ideas for uses, what exactly we're going to spend 400,000 on. Um, I, I'm wondering if we should spend some a, a separate time just to focus on uh, the need for an RFP and and what it would include. Other thoughts and comments by council? Yes. Maybe, could you, I'm not sure. I'm sorry, excuse me. What were you? I'm not sure what exactly you you, you want to do. You, you don't want to do an RFP or? 
108 or what were you suggesting there? So my comment was, um, you know, it's a seven minutes after 11 and we're just starting the conversation on a request for proposals. I think we do need at some point the request for proposal. And, and uh, so the scope of it, the amount of it, I, I would like to focus on perhaps in another work session. I mean, I, I know I understand the need to move forward on it, uh, but I think we've run out of time and, and this is an important topic that impacts our budget, which we're trying to balance always. I, I think we'd be more than happy to come back and go over the scoping and what we're asking for consulting to submit and go over that with council at another workshop. And Councillor Mevaji, this is Kathleen, if I may. Um, just to clarify also, this is not general fund, right, Ahmad? This is not part of general fund. Um, and I will, I can also find previous um, work sessions where the council provided the direction on the RFP and the scope of, of that as well, just for your information, but we can certainly schedule some additional time um, to review that and have that conversation again. Yeah, yeah Kathleen, so, you're not, correct. So the funds will be from the timber funds that as part of the um, management of fire and trying to reduce the risk of fire, we've been doing some calculate thinning in the area and we've been using the funds for this kind of process. So it is coming from the timber funds. And and I'm not, you know, we keep losing having Julie in and out, I think because of connectivity issues. But so what does everyone want to do? Do you want to just go ahead and give the go ahead? Uh, or do you want to have another session just on the RFP? Uh Councillor Medvigy, I, su I support your perspective on that uh, with waiting relative to the RFP. And when that is considered, I'd also like to hear from um, our county manager with regard to the economic analysis and ordering of the phases based on the, uh, on the economic analysis, because that makes a huge portion of that um, RFP uh, relative to economic analysis. And I wonder, do we maybe have that expertise uh, if through, throughout our staff that could complement what is in public works? So I, I think the county manager could give us some good insight on that when that discussion uh, takes place on the RFP. Julie Temple. Uh, yeah, Council Member G. Sorry. Uh, you know, I, I think it's important. We do have a new council. We've, there's been a lot of work done on this project over the years. Um, we've given a lot of direction over the years. So between a new council and managing this pandemic, it's probably important that we review some of the work that's been done and decide if that's the direction we still agree we want to go. Um, and, and so maybe to your point, and Kathleen, to your point, that we just get a review on kind of what we've done and, and if we want to make any changes, that's still appropriate. So I would support whether it's a work session or some other meeting where we just kind of take a look at where we've been and where we decide we want to go. And I'm fine with that too. Okay, super. Okay, uh, is that enough, Ahmad, for today then? Uh, thank you, Council. Yes, it is. Uh, so we have direction on the RFP. Uh, the also response to the questions from the resident and also the makeup of the committees. So. Okay, super. So uh, if that concludes this session, how about another uh, five minute break before we roll into council time? I see one thumbs up. All right. All right, let's take, uh, and we're going to still use this Zoom, Kathleen. We don't leave this one, correct? We'll just come back in five minutes. Yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you. See you back in five minutes. <laughs> 